You see the drip, yeah, I fit it up. Hop in my car and get it up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. This video is sponsored by me and my protein donut company and my weight loss support group. For more information, click the links below in my description and thank you all for the support. Hello and welcome back to this channel. My name is Michelle McDaniel, local dog mom of three. Who expresses her opinions that will offend somebody? Because it's the internet, a place where people really like to be upset. Upset at the fact that you do not share the same opinion as them. And since you don't, you're some type of phobic. What are you looking at? What are you looking at? Are you ready to learn? Are you ready to learn? Because we are going to learn how to become a fat ally. And if we do not do these things, then we, yep, yep, you, right here, are part of the problem. The fat problem. Girl, are you okay? You are part of the problem, the fat problem. Heart attacks and other issues that come with obesity are not the issue. It's the issue that people that have thin privilege are not advocating and yelling and getting on top of their soapbox and screaming for extremely fat people to have chairs that fit their butt. <laughs> I, I can't make this up. So let's, let's just start. If you wanna be a great ally to fat people, here are some things you can do. When you go to the doctor, encourage them to do the following things. Eliminate any weight or BMI cutoff policies. Okay, stop. Every once in a while, I will get some idiot who will say, Wow, Michelle, you're so harsh. Stop picking on these fat, helpless activists. Get over it. She said to get rid of any weight limit cutoff. I didn't want to talk about this story. I don't plan on getting into detail about this story. Unfortunately, have you guys heard about the teenager, or what I'm thinking from just my brain, from the little bit that I read, but the teenager, a very young person that went on a very intense ride and there was a weight limit and all the other people said no on other rides, but for some reason, this person on this specific ride said, yeah, get on there. We have a weight limit for absolutely no reason. It doesn't matter, but you'll be fine. I don't know if the person who let him on is a fat ally and watches this woman, but he, died. He fell to his death. It's extremely sad. I hate the story. I hate the situation. I hate everything about it, but I guess that's what needs to be done to become a fat ally. Get rid of weight limits. Suggest everything. Idiots. Okay, well this set the damn tone for me already. I was in a good mood. We got the dogs here today. I absolutely love my outfit from Ross. I love the red lips. We were in a good mood, but now, as she said, get rid of every weight limit, and there's reasons why they don't let super tiny people get on rides. There's, you know, those little things when you're a little kid and you're not at the size where you need to be to keep you safe. Yep, just get rid of those. Get rid of everything. They're just there to discriminate against you. Also to the people who tell me not to be harsh towards these people or anybody that I talk about, but specifically these people, death is harsh, okay? That young person who fell to their death, that was pretty harsh. So to those people who say that, idiots, stupid, dumb, dumb, poopy head. Okay, back to school. Stop using the BMI completely because it is ineffective and racist. <laughs> Even Rigby is like, what the f Fuck. Okay, so I absolutely love how she doesn't just elaborate on why that is racist. She just throws in a keyword that helps these people who just go with whatever these people say because they don't want to be canceled and they want to be an ally so bad they won't even question it. She just used racist to help her little weird TikTok, which is what they all do. They all want to say racist and the whole crowd will be like, oh yeah, yeah, no, no, we will do exactly what you're saying. We don't want to be racist. Honey, I guess I'm racist as hell then because I am not going with this. I am not on board, but I guess we just take her word for it. Get medical equipment that will actually work for fat patients. Oh, okay. So I guess she really is moving on and is not going to elaborate on what she just said. What kind of teacher are you? I guess I'll have to educate myself. I thought this TikTok was to help educate me and my fat phobia. I am personally someone who takes BMI with a grain of salt because it is flawed. But also, why does a BMI chart hate me? Why is it racist? White lady couldn't tell me. So let's just Google it. So another white lady can probably tell me why it's racist. <laughs> okay. Some of y'all might be new or just confused little minions as to why I'm dogging on white ladies. I'm not dogging on all white ladies. I'm talking about a specific white woman. The white women in these groups who scream racist this and racist that and tell everyone everything's racist and black people are oppressed. And when I and other black people say, well, I don't feel oppressed by a chart, they will tell me, shh, 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 shh. Let me tell you that you are oppressed. Okay, little black girl, let me help you. Hey, show you. Let me show you. All right, let's go to another class for a second since teach couldn't actually teach us. 
The use of BMI, a person's weight in kilograms divided by height in meters squared, is deeply integrated into US healthcare systems. The World Health Organization and the National Institutes of Health use BMI to define obesity. Oh no, not that. Don't define obesity. It's scary and it hurts feelings. You just keep staring at me, dude. <laughs> You okay? It's all the stupidness that I'm spewing out. We're not even halfway through. I know, it's all new to you. Uh, yeah, I, I, I know. A patient's weight, which is among the first measurements taken during hospital admission, is calculated for BMI and checked against thresholds, or what experts call cut points. During the coronavirus pandemic, certain jurisdictions prioritized people with higher BMIs in vaccine distribution plans because some research suggests that obesity can be a risk factor for more severe COVID-19 outcomes. Hasn't that been proven that if you are obese, the severity of corona will be more intense? The index was established by Bell Belgian mathematician Lambert Adolf Jacques, a man, a white man, who sought to measure the height and weight of the quote unquote average man based on a sample of white European men. He saw this average as ideal. Today, some experts argue this measure is no longer relevant to the country's population. I think that's true. America's demographic has dramatically shifted over the past century. People of color make up 40% of the US population, and research has shown that black and white people people tend to have different body compositions. Okay, there it is. That's why it's racist because it was made based off of the more, you know, the higher percentage of what made up of America, white people. And it was made by a white man, which is also a no-no in today's society. So there it is. I never really got the answer because whenever I watch these TikToks, they just say BMI is racist. I don't know if it's racist. I think it's maybe just outdated, even though people back then were very racist. I don't know. It's just weird that they just say everything is racist. Just everything is rooted in racism. No shit. That's how it was back then. Everybody Body hated everything that was different from them. Our ancestors were a bunch of racist motherfuckers. Especially because it was okay back then. And now it's not. A lot of things are outdated. Shit, things are outdated from 20 years ago. Think of how outdated things are from 60, 70, 80 years ago. Disney has a lot of things rooted in racism. I don't know how many of these fat activists I see rolling around Disneyland with their Mickey and Minnie Mouse ears eating a Minnie Mouse ice cream cone. Tess Holiday. Get medical equipment that will actually work for fat patients, like blood pressure cuffs that fit, and won't give a false high reading because they're too tight. Sounds like a personal issue to me. Sounds like you need to go to a specialist that has special equipment for your special body. And then you're gonna put in more money for that special equipment, which will then increase their prices, which you guys will also complain about. Oh my God, and you'll scream discrimination. Set up their office in a way that makes it usable for fat people, like putting chairs without arms in every room. Sounds like another personal issue. Issue. Like it would be very nice if businesses accommodated to every single person out there, but also no, it wouldn't. From the business perspective, that can get pretty costly unless the major amount of people coming to that office are substantially large and not fitting into chairs. And it's like a big problem. That's their prominent client that's coming in. It wouldn't make too much sense to spend the money to get those types of industrial size chairs that would fit an industrial size ass. And this problem could be solved if we promoted more eating in moderation, no crash diets, no promoting binging, because then you can't fit into chairs, but a nice middle ground. Promote looking at food labels, promote measuring out your food, promote just being aware of what you're putting into your body and eating a very healthy diet, but also including your little fun foods on occasion. Definitely promoting that you do not have to be super thin and also promoting that being obese is extremely unhealthy. See, problem solved. But these people refuse to work hard. I guess offices could invest in a couch, which I have seen offices have a couch in their waiting room, which is very nice. But I do have to say, I do understand and sympathize with the problem with sitting for bigger people, not saying that I was ever so big that I couldn't fit into a chair, but I was so big that I was extremely cautious and insecure about the simple fact of just sitting down was just a nightmare for me. Why? Because I was already insecure about my big legs. And when you sit, your legs get wider. And I noticed at my highest, my hips spilled over the chair. I hated sitting and just usually would just stand up because I thought everybody would just notice and even worse, say something. All right, this is a nice waiting room. Oh God, a chair and I'm in a waiting room. That means I have to sit on it, but my legs get bigger when I sit. It's okay. It's okay, Michelle. No one ever notices these things. It's literally all in my head. Everyone, quick, stare at her legs. Look at her legs. 
Look at her legs. Big legs. No, no, no. It's, it's not like oh my the God, thought. big legs. Your legs. They're just so big. They're huge. No, look at them. Everyone, look. look. Everyone's look like, at no one would They're notice literally this. hanging over the seat. <laughs> They're big. Ginormous. Big. Oh, God. Big legs. Big, big legs. I just wanted to sit down. They're big. In a chair. Big. In a waiting room. They're big. Please stop. They're big. I know my legs are huge. They're big. It's obviously disrupting your time. They're big. They're big. They're big. They're big. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, no. So I can only imagine if I was the size that would get stuck in a chair or break a chair. That has to be horrible, but I personally would not blame or expect expect anybody to just get a chair to fit my ass. I would either bring my own chair because I'm extra as hell or work hard and reduce my butt size. I just can't take the level of audacity and entitlement of these people. It never gets old. It makes me want to get my own practice, my own office and put a bunch of just small chairs for average sized people. Oh no. Actually, you know what? I don't even put chairs in there. I'm going to put treadmills. You're going to wait and walk because y'all need it. Take a lap. Run off some of that frustration. When you go to a clothing store, tell them to expand their size range. Oh my God, I told you. The pure entitlement to walk into a store and tell them, no, demand. It does not matter what their size range currently is. Tell them to expand it. I could put another scene in here right now. They make it so easy, but this is supposed to be a quick and easy video. I don't feel like doing another scene. They're annoying to edit, so we won't. Okay, you know what? Let's just do it. How would this play out? I need this store to increase their size range. What? I checked your sizes. The biggest size is a triple X. How do you expect Tess Holiday, Tammy Slayton, Lizzo to purchase clothes here? Okay, besides the other ones, why would Lizzo shop at Ross? She's extremely rich. Oh, th this is Ross? Yeah. I've just been marching into every single clothing store I see and telling them to increase their size for fat women, specifically fat women. I don't give a freak about fat men or any other body size for that matter. Why are you doing that. Some chick on TikTok told me to. Huh, huh, hmm, hmm. Now that I said it out loud, it sounds a little, yeah. I just work here, so, oh. I can bring up my manager if you want, but she's just a 16 year old girl and I don't think she cares either. She's just trying to get paid minimum wage, you know? No, it's fine. I guess I just like to follow what everybody else does on TikTok and wanted to fit in for a change. Okay, well, you failed. Uh. Yeah, you, you fail. You know what this means. What does that mean? Get her, fatty activist! No, no, I swear I'm a fat ally. I went to every clothing store. I went to every clothing store. I asked, I told them, get fat, get fat clothes. <laughs> I knew all along. I knew all along. No! Okay, no more scenes. They just make it so easy and fun with these odd situations that they expect people to do in real everyday life. If you work in education, get in touch with the health and PE departments. Okay. Ask them if they have anything in their curriculum that involves students weighing themselves, counting calories, or using the BMI in any capacity. See, not only BMI, it's literally everything. They agree with nothing. I do like guess why in PE do you have to weigh, you know, the kids, but it's physical education. They need to educate you on it and make you aware of physical education. A part of physical education, at least what I learned in physical education, is that you want to be active and you don't want to be obese and you want to eat healthy, which is very odd because the lunches at school were not healthy. We had little Caesars and McDonald's at one of my high schools. So very confusing. But anyway, about the weight, being bigger does hinder your performance in most sports. At least the stuff that you do in PE, it does hinder your performance if you are bigger. We all saw and remember the fat kid on mild day being very slow. I felt so bad because there was like two or three in my class. Everybody else finished and we were sitting, conversing, being teenagers. And the last three fat kids come rolling into the gym after the run, heaving and hoeing and having a really hard time. Just because you're in last place doesn't mean you're slower than everyone else. And now that I've inspired you, I'm going to scoot to the finish line athletically. That's very sad and extremely embarrassing. They know they're the fat kids of the class. If they do, educate them on how all of these practices 
substances lead to eating disorders and ask them to stop. <laughs> I could put another scene here. Also, she says that it's a fact. This is going to lead every single person to get an ED. And we know what ED they're talking about, not binge eating. The other one that supposedly all these obese people have, none of them have binge eating disorder. They all only have that one specific ED. My ED is once again forgotten, shunned. It's not even real, not a thing. All for all inclusive, huh? Anyway, this is a lot of shit to do. All for what? To be a fat ally to this fat chick that's probably going to get upset about something you say that doesn't agree with her and cancel you anyway. Y'all hear about that fat doctor lady that got a lot of eyes on health at every size who just got canceled by her own community? <laughs> That's hilarious. That's how these people act. Why should I care about these people that don't give a about their bodies at all? They only care about me stroking their feelings and their ego. Why do I have to do all of this work when they don't put in any work at all? What the hell do they do? Tell me what to do and then I have to follow through? Okay, bad acceptance group, what have you done for me? This shouldn't be all take. This should be give and take. So what have you given me exactly? Absolutely nothing. So in conclusion, how to be a fat ally to this specific group, don't. Just don't freaking do it. I will never be an ally and I will never sign up for any of this fat positive teacher ladies classes. Not only did your TikTok not receive a fat ally, but you also did not receive a new student. Goodbye. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Ooh. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Fit it up. Hop in my car in the giddy up. Get it up. Secure the baggy, I get the bus. Get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Fit it up. Hop in my car in the giddy up. Secure the baggy, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Ooh, I've been on the flex since flex on.